welcome all my fellow Washington brethren and sister. I am your man and resident Washington football team fan, Lou. Thank you for joining me here on the Washington Football Report. So we got more news in the Washington front office and all of a sudden this feels like an episode of Full House. Who's coming in next to stay in the Washington front office? As if we didn't think we had enough guys in the front office, Ron Rivera continues to bolster what already feels like a very crowded front office as Yesterday, we got the news that Washington was going to bring in former Carolina Panthers GM Marty Herney uh, to Washington to carry the same title as general manager. Now, as we talked about, as Ron alluded to, the GM title carries more than just personnel moves with the roster, free agency, draft, and so forth and so forth. There are also other things. And I told you, Ron was overwhelmed last season. You know, that coach-centric thing sounded really nice until he got here and realized in Washington, coach-centric is cool, but it comes with a lot of shit, like the name and uniforms and ticket sales and off-the-field issues with the owner and Washington Post article this and New York Times article that. Ron was like, sheesh, what did I get myself into? So... Ron said, not doing that again. Now, I still want full control over personnel decisions and things of that nature, but I do want a little bit of help. And so I'm going to bring in some guys that have been doing this for a long time. They'll be able to help me with that along with, hopefully, this is the hope that Kyle Smith still has a very big say in what goes on in personnel within the organization. But he's like, you know what? I need help. You know, it's funny. We, we used to kill Bruce, and for good reason, uh, because Bruce was a tyrant. But Bruce handled a lot of the outside of the football field issues, which he termed winning off the field. Well, that kept Dan from having to do those things. And, you know, whether he was doing those things well or not, and we don't think he was doing them very well. That's why the, the you know, losing will do this too. But that's part of the reason why the stadium was usually half full with the opposition's fans is because Bruce Allen wasn't doing his job off the field. And when they tried to hire a marketing staff to come in and rebrand, Bruce ended up helping get rid of those guys too. Not after only, what, six months or so of, of those guys being here. Nonetheless, bottom line is, Washington, a day after hiring Marty Herney to come in as general manager, are now going to hire a guy that we thought was going to compete for the GM job in Martin Mayhew, the ex-Detroit Lions general manager. I talked about him on the show last week as a guy that I wasn't really interested in having come here as our next GM if we were going to hire from uh, outside. Well, turns out Rivera's like, hey, I want you and um, uh, you and uh, let me get one of those back there too. He's just picking up a bunch of stuff. Now, right now, according to Ian Rappaport, who first broke this story, that the... In, in San Francisco, which is where Martin Matthew uh, Mayhew is coming from, he was the VP of player personnel. Well, we already have one of those. His name is Kyle Smith, in case you didn't know. Okay? So we already have a guy that's the VP of player personnel, which oversees college and pro scouting and, and all of the decision making that goes into both sides, not just the pro or as we know with Kyle, he was once... Uh, the uh, the 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 college scouting, the the director of college scouting. So he was over the whole college scouting division and, and portion of the organization. Well, he got the elevation and title to the VP of player personnel, which oversees both pro and college scouting. And so he was the one making the chief decisions, along with Rivera, of course, last year during the draft and free agency and so forth and so forth. Uh, for whatever reason, Rivera felt like he needed, and I, I talked about this. I don't necessarily know how big of a shakeup this is going to be from a player person. I just told you, look, I, this is how I feel, and, and this could be wrong, and, and, and Marty Herney may not be making the decision solely by himself. Uh, it doesn't matter. He's got the title of GM, and if shit goes wrong with this roster, I'm not going to blame Kyle Smith. I'm going to blame Marty Herney, and if shit goes right, 
I'm not going to give Kyle Smith the credit. I'm going to give that credit to Marty Herney. That's what comes with the GM title, whether you like it or you don't like it. I don't care if he's not making the decisions or not. Then don't give him the title of general manager because general managers in this league, they are the ones responsible for roster management, whether you like it or you don't like it. And so I don't care what you try to sell me on. He's not going to be making these decisions by himself. And he's the one that is going to sign off on what we do in the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth, seventh rounds of the NFL draft from here on out. And he's the one that's going to sign off on moves made in free agency. And he's the guy that's got to answer. So again, I don't know what position Martin Mayhew is going to come in here, but apparently he's leaving his post as VP of player personnel in San Francisco to come get a high ranking. And these are the words of Ian Rappaport, a high ranking um, position within the front office in Washington, what is that position ultimately going to be? As a matter of fact, I'm going to read this tweet to you right now, verbatim, so you can understand what is going on here. So Ian Rappaport tweets out, hashtag 49ers VP of player personnel Martin Mayhew is headed to Washington football team as a high-ranking executive with a title to be t- determined. So we don't even know. We're going to make some shit up for him. I told you, if you want a guy, you'll make up a, t- a, a title for him. I- I've talked about this, whether it's a coach or a guy in your front office. If you want a guy, that's why it's a good old boys club, because you can always get your homeboy a job, okay? I told you, if if you want your guy on your staff, you'll make up. He, he is the quality control assistant and assistant to the head coach. What the hell does that mean? Don't ask me, but he's got a job now. So Ian Rappaport says he's coming on as a high-ranking of executive with a title to be named later. He'll work with Ron Rivera and Marty Herney as Washington football team restructures its organization. Restructures its organization is an understatement. They are totally revamping this entire front office top to bottom. And again, the coach-centric approach is being put to the test and Ron is passing with flying colors. If you didn't think Ron was in total control before, well, he's in total control now because he is pulling all the strings He's doing whatever the hell he wants to do. And right now, his biggest thing is interior decorating the front office. I'm changing around this and I'm changing around that. And this should go here and that guy should go there. We'll see what happens. We don't know what this means for Kyle Smith. Again, as yesterday, we didn't know what the Marty Herney hiring meant for Kyle Smith. I don't know what this hiring means for Kyle Smith. It doesn't seem like it's good, but we don't know what they're going to give him a title of and what his power will be within the organization. Honestly, Herney coming in felt more like a guy that was going to take some of those ancillary day in, day out, mundane tasks off the plate of Ron Rivera. Look, I don't want to hear about the shit off the field. You deal with that. I just want to focus on football stuff. I'm a football guy. I don't want to deal with any of the ancillary off the field, you know, name change and all that. I know they hired Jason Wright and all that stuff and he's supposed to be handling all. I don't want any parts of any of that stuff. Washington Post articles and all that shit with Dan, you handle that stuff. I just want to talk ball. That's what I'm here to do. That's what I want to do. That's what that hire said to me. Now, this Martin Mayhew hire, I don't know. Really don't know how to feel about that. Think he's going to have some power, some say so, and some things that he'll be helping in terms of the decision making process. And again, he's coming into this organization with the same title that Kyle Smith currently holds. I don't know what that means, but again, starting to feel like a full house, starting to feel like it's one too many cooks in the kitchen, if you know what I mean. So uh, don't forget Eric Stokes, who is currently the. Um, Pro personnel scout on this football team, the director of pro pro personnel. So that's the guy that interviewed. And again, I think that was just for Rooney rule uh, satisfaction. Okay. That was to get that out of the way. But they interviewed Eric Stokes, right? He's a brother. So that took care of the Rooney rule so they could go ahead and hire Marty Herney. Maybe there's nothing to that other than, hey, we needed to fulfill the Rooney rule. And, you know, this, the, the, I don't like to make these kinds of statements. As a matter of fact, I'm not going to. But you know, the whole hiring process, you know, of hiring Marty Herney, I'm going to say it because to me, this is the analogy that I have. It's the only one I can think of. It it feels DC sniper-ish in the sense that 
and I hate to even use this because that that was a serious situation. But this feels DC sniperish in the sense that they were going around shooting random people to to throw the authorities off the trail of the person that they ultimately wanted to kill, which they ultimately didn't get to. But they were doing all of these random shootings just to kill one person in particular. This higher hiring of Marty Herney and all the people that they interviewed beforehand, it seems like it was just a means to an end. Like they were just, you know, identifying random guys out there to kind of throw everybody off the scent. And then, oh yeah, we, we want to interview Marty Herney. And just like that, he got the job. You know what I mean? Uh, Eric Stokes out of nowhere gets interviewed. Why? Because he's a brother. You needed that satisfy the Rooney rule. He did that for them. And generally, when you just want to hurry up and satisfy the Rooney rule, you just grab the closest person to you that will satisfy it, interview them, and then keep it pushing. I can't tell you how many times I've seen that done in organizations where they want to hire a head coach. So they grab the, the, the running backs coach and pull him in. The, hey, hey, you come in here. Interview for this job real quick. And give him an interview. Yep, sounds good. Great, awesome. And get him out of there. All right, now we can go hire the guy we really want to hire. Maybe that's what that Eric Stokes interview was all about. I don't know. That's what it seems like to me. But that's nor here nor there. Eric Stokes is still there in the side of the building. I don't know how they feel about him. Uh, Kyle Smith, still in the building, but for how long? Don't know. Uh, but he's still your VP of player personnel. They're bringing in Martin Mayhew, who held the same title as Kyle Smith in San Francisco, VP of player personnel. Not to mention, he used to be a general manager in this league in Detroit uh, for uh, almost a decade. So I'm not saying, I'm just saying. And then of course, Marty Herney's here. He is the new general manager and has a very close relationship with Ron Rivera. It's a lot of cooks in this kitchen, man. Feels like a full house. Everywhere you look, there's a place a somebody who needs you. Seems like every day we turn around, they hiring somebody else in the front office. I guess tomorrow they'll hire the, the counting guy that they interviewed a, a, a week ago or so. I don't know. I'm not, I'm just saying, I'm not saying, I'm just saying. A lot of shit going on. A lot of reshuffling of the deck. This doesn't feel like it's going to end with Kyle Smith here. I'm not saying, I'm just saying. And maybe he is. Doesn't feel like it. I already told you. I'm on board with whatever happens. What happens, happens. What are you going to do about it? I'm not one of those guys that's going to sit there and bitch and complain for the next, you know, six months about, oh, we should have kept Kyle Smith. Maybe Kyle Smith goes on and becomes an assistant GM and then ultimately a GM in his league and tears it up. And we'll look back and say, well, that was another mistake we made. We'll add them to the list of mistakes this organization has made. But I can say this. This move wasn't made by Daniel Snyder or Bruce Allen. So just off of the merit and strength of that alone, I'm willing to give it a chance. Ron Rivera came in and we said, Ron's plan, Ron's plan. I, I told you, I don't know what this plan consists of, but what I'm going to do is in advance, I'm gonna put on my safety belt, gonna buckle it in tight. I need to hear that click, click, click. So I know that it's in there. I'm going to give it a couple of nice hard tugs, yank, yank, to make sure it's in there good. All right, then I'm going to pull the other fastener down so that I'm in tight. And I'm going to sit here and I'm going to enjoy this ride. I hope I'm going to come out of this thing safe, but I'm going to enjoy this ride wherever the hell it takes me. And hopefully when we reach our destination, we're hoisting a Lombardi trophy. Maybe we do, maybe we don't. But you know what? I'm along for the ride. And when we were one and five, when we were two and seven, and a lot of you wanted off, and I said, I'm not getting out. As a matter of fact, I'm making sure my device is even tighter. And I'm going to check the airbags just in case he wrecks this thing. I need to be protected. I'm not going through the front windshield, though, because I got my safety belt on. A lot of you said, well, I'm just going to get the hell out. You guys, when you get there, give me a call and let me know where you are, and I'll catch a ride there. Cool. I'm not getting out. A lot of you got back in the vehicle after we made the postseason or you saw this team trending in the right direction. Whatever the case may be, I'm not moving off the spot. I'm in my seat. I'm comfortable. I've got my safety belt on. He can hire whoever the hell he wants to. 
Let's just see where this thing goes. Before you jump, I, I can't tell you how many comments I read yesterday. Rivera is effing up. He This is the first mistake he's made. Look, I wanted, just like I wanted KOC to stay last year. Kevin O'Connell. I didn't want him to leave. Him and Dwayne seemed to have a little bit of a rapport. Never wanted him to go. Guess what? He was gone. What are you going to do about it? Scott Turner's in. I don't have a problem with Scott Turner. He's here. Embrace him. Okay? Marty Herney's here. Panthers fans are going to tell you it's the worst thing you could have ever done. Who knows what his job is actually going to consist of? I, who knows what the decision you know, process is going to be like? He's here. Embrace him. Martin Mayhew, Lions fans are going to flood you with all of this inundate information. Oh my God, he's terrible. You guys are a dumpster fire, this, that, and the third. Guess what? He's here. What are you going to do? Embrace him. Okay? Let's see where this thing goes. That's all you can do. The man came in and in his first season, he swept Dallas, he swept Philadelphia, and he took us uh, seven and nine. Who gives a shit? We won the division. The champs are here. The champs are here. In case you forgot, don't let anybody try to demean your division crown either. A lot of teams like to point the finger. You won your division at seven and nine. Well, guess what? I played a playoff game and you didn't. So last time I checked, I was better than you. Had 49ers fans, I'm looking, I'm looking down Twitter and I'm in the comments. You know that I can be a bit of a stalker, all right? And, you know, and I, and I can go down the comment section, not say a word, but read every single comment. I see a 49ers fans talking all this trash. I'm like, didn't we just beat your ass? Didn't, didn't we beat you without scoring an offensive touchdown? Get the hell out of my face. What are you, why are you talking to me? Leave me alone, Okay. At the end of the day, I don't know what these hirings mean. Don't know what this means for the front office. I just know it's being shaken up. All right? Ron is, like I said, he's, re, he's rearranging the front office. I guess he has some sort of vision as to how he wants things to be run and how he wants things to look. I know one thing's for certain. I can assure you of this. Ron does not want to have the amount of responsibility on his plate that he had last year. When he took over this coach-centric approach and he thought everything was going to be nice and sweet, he heard Pete Carroll and he heard Bill Belichick and he looked around and he said, man, they got some pretty good programs. Yeah, I'd like to do that. And then he realized very quickly they don't have to deal with the shit that we have to deal with here. They don't have an owner. Well, maybe the Patriots do, but that's no here nor there. They don't have an owner that's having a new article published about him every two or three weeks that incriminates, you know, potentially incriminates the owner and drags the franchise through the mud yet again. They don't have an ongoing debate with um, ownership and minority owners versus the majority owner. They don't have a name change debate and crisis and trying to figure out what the next name of the team is going to be and is it going to change the uniforms. And he didn't have all that other stuff going on in Seattle and New England. He realized very quickly, it's a lot of shit I got to deal with. You know what would make it a lot easier if I hired somebody or somebody's, some guys, to take some of this stuff off my plate and I can just focus on football, which is what I ultimately want to do. So now he brings in Marty Herney, a guy that he trusts, worked very closely with for several years in Carolina. And then he brings in Martin Mayhew, another guy that he's probably crossed paths with at some point or it was recommended to him. Someone else trusts him, and so he's coming in the building, and he's going to get a high-ranking title. We don't even know what that title is, which is incredible to me, but they'll make up some kind of executive vice president of uh, player personnel or, or football operations. They'll give him some bullshit, and who knows what the hierarchy is going to be. I honestly don't give a shit. You know, this guy is here, Ron's up here, and then who's the first guy that answers to Ron, and then who's the guy under that guy? I don't give a shit. Who's picking the players? How do those players perform? And are we winning ball games? At the end of the day, let's just keep this as simple as possible. I don't give a shit what Martin Mayhew's been brought here to do. I don't know how it impacts Kyle Smith, and frankly, I don't care. All I care about is... Can Marty Herney or whoever the hell is making these decisions on players, can they get the right free agents in here? Can they get the right draft picks in here? And can those guys help us win football games? And that's all you should be concerned about. That's it. 
Really? That is it at its core, at its essence. Can these guys, whomever's in charge, and I told you, I can't speak for you. I don't know how you're going to internalize all of this stuff. I'm just telling you how I'm going to internalize this. All these other moves, you know, Martin Mayhew and anybody else that Ron may decide to bring in and any reshuffling of the deck in the front office that may go on afterwards. Cool. What I'm going to do is I'm going to keep it simple, stupid, okay? I'm just going to take Marty Herney at his title, at face value, GM, and whomever we get in free agency, that's on Marty. Whomever we get in the draft, that's on Marty. And you tell me that Rob Rogers is in charge of the cap? Okay, then I won't assign blame for cap issues to Marty Herney. I'll assign those to Rob Rogers. So I won't worry about cap situations in regards to Marty Herney. I will assign that blame to Rob Rogers if some shit goes awry there. But outside of that, personnel decisions, free agency, draft, Marty Herney, you're on the hook. I don't know what Martin Mayhew has. I don't know what Kyle Smith has in terms of input. Unless somebody comes out, unless Ron Rivera steps up and says, Kyle Smith is still running the draft. At that point, then the, the focus shifts from Marty Herney to then to Kyle Smith. All right, Kyle, what do you got? What do you got for me, guy? But until that happens, I'm just going off of what the title of GM means. And that means Marty Herney is in charge of free agency and the draft. And until somebody tells me otherwise, that's what I care about. All these musical chairs and will Kyle Smith leave and get a job somewhere else? Guess what? Shit happens. Kyle Smith could go somewhere else and never get a job as a GM. Kyle Smith could go somewhere, get a job as a GM, and flounder and flop and get fired in three years. Kyle Smith could go somewhere and blow up and be the next John Schneider, a guy that was here as a GM under Marty. We'll see what happens. At the end of the day, I don't care about any of that stuff. I just want to win. I just want to win. And if Ron thinks that these moves that he's making is going to help us win, if it's going to continue to help this culture go in the direction that it's going, which will further the agenda of winning, I'm all for it. Come on, bring it on. So, to shorten this story, because there's going to be a lot said over the next two weeks or so about all the moves made by Ron, all of this is great. And we don't know who has what title and what what means. I just know what GM means. Player, you know, VP of player personnel and and, and VP of pro scouting and VP of college scouting, all that shit is frivolous to me, okay? Because at the end of the day, every team just about in the league has a, a director of pro scouting and a director of college scouting. Does anybody ever blame those guys for anything? No. You know who gets the blame? Who gets the credit? The GM. So I'm going to keep it simple. If Marty Herney does his job well, if these players that's picked, whether it's Kyle Smith or it's Ron Rivera, it's a redskin decision, as they used to say, or now a Washington decision, whatever the hell they want to call it. I don't care what it is, unless somebody, that guy probably needs to be Ron Rivera, comes out and says, hey, Marty didn't make that decision, or Marty's not controlling the draft. We're still leaving that in the hands of Kyle Smith. Unless that is clearly stated, Marty Herney is in charge of all personnel decisions. And that's what I care about most. That and the cap. And Rob Rogers is in charge of the cap. Okay? So, in closing, yep, another guy being brought into the front office. Man, it's a full house. All right? However, we'll see what all of this actually means for the organization. As long as this thing doesn't turn dysfunctional, which I don't think Ron will allow to happen, As long as this thing doesn't go sideways on us and the players being picked in the draft and free agency and the contracts given out to ex said players in free agency aren't ridiculous and come back to bite us in our ass because we're in a really good spot with the cap right now. We feel really good about all of the moves that have been made over the last three years or so from a draft pick standpoint. And even this last uh, free agency draft uh, class of guys with McKissick and Thomas and 
Darby and all these guys that we brought in that were highly successful, Wes Schweitzer, um, KPL, all these guys that performed well. We need to continue to build off of that. And if we can continue to build off of all of the draft picks that have been made over the last three or four years, like Cam Curl last year, okay? Like Deron Payne and Jonathan Allen in, in the first rounds in the last few years. We can continue to build off of some of those guys, like Jimmy Moreland in the seventh round a couple of years back. Then we have something, you know? We, we talk about all of these draft choices and things of that nature. Chase Rouye was a fifth or sixth round pick four years ago. He just got an extension here. We need more of that. Less of Preston Smith being drafted in the second round and then being allowed to walk to Green Bay. Not saying that that was the wrong decision, but that's a second round pick that's no longer here. You know, less of the Ryan Andersons who won't be retained this offseason in the second round. Less of the Trent Murphys of the second round. Less of the Josh Doxons and the Dwayne Haskins of the first round. And more of the guys that are here contributing to this football team. That's what we need more of. The Cole Holcombs in the fifth round. We need more of those. So we'll see what happens. All I really care about is the Marty Herney hire. And that's about it. They can hire whoever the hell else they want and, and don't know what that means for Kyle Smith. I wanted him here, but obviously Ron doesn't value him in the same way that we do. Okay, fine. That's Ron's prerogative. It's Ron's plan. It's always been Ron's plan since he got here. So Ron gets to do whatever the hell he likes. And I already told you, Ron can do whatever he likes. Yeah, I'm not getting out of my seat. I'm not getting out of the car. Some of you have gone from one end of the spectrum, winning the division and excited to now, Ron has lost me. This is a terrible decision. Well, we'll see. How do you know? I bet you some fans probably thought hiring Bill Belichick after he ditched the Jets, didn't have as much success as everyone thought he was going to have in Cleveland, probably thought that wasn't a great idea either. Maybe Pete Carroll being hired in Seattle after not having the success that everyone thought he was going to have with the Jets or not getting it done with the Patriots, even though he did have some success with the Patriots. And then bolting the NFL for college, leading USC to a national championship, but having a whole lot of shit with sanctions and stuff coming down and he got the hell out of Dodge just in time. Maybe that wasn't a good hire. Turned out to be a hell of a hire. We'll see. Who knows? Who knows? Just enjoy the ride. That's it. All you should be concerned about is who this team is going to get in free agency and the draft. That's where your focus should be. Not fixated on general manager and, you know, this vice president, a player personnel guy coming from another team and Martin Mayhew and what title is he going to have? Who gives a shit? Honestly speaking, that's how I feel. I can't tell you how to feel. I'm just worried about Marty Herney and the decisions that he makes and how that impacts this team. That's what I'm fixated on because the track record for him in Carolina wasn't great. I'm not going to sit here and sugarcoat it. It wasn't great. Maybe he wasn't here, brought here to be the point man in the draft. Maybe he was. We'll find out. If Kyle Smith doesn't say a word and he doesn't go anywhere and Ron continues to, to praise him because the praise for, for Kyle Smith last year was effusive. During the season this year, you would have thought Kyle Smith cheated, was, was uh, married to Ron's daughter and cheated on her because it, it's, it, it turned cold. Like th there was this all of a sudden frosty shoulder that Kyle Smith started to get. So this is a continuation of that. Let's see if he stays here or not. I'm interested. But I'm, I'm not fixated on it. I think Ron said it best when he said, what's interesting and what's important. The whole reshuffling of the front office deck, it's interesting. What's important is Marty Herney being hired as our GM. That's important. Because he's the guy picking the players. Or at least that's who I'm assigning praise and blame to.
whether he's totally in charge or not, doesn't matter. He's got the title, so he's going to fall on the sword when shit doesn't go right, and he's going to be elevated and propped up when things do go right. So we'll see what the hell happens, but some of you have to decipher in your mind what's important and what's interesting. Oh, Martin Mayhew, for me, coming in, title to be named later, hmm, interesting. Yesterday's hire of Marty Herney as GM, that was important. I'll let you be the decision maker in, as to how that process goes on in your head and what's important and what's interesting to you. But I just know, I want you to leave it in the comment section. I had a blast reading all the comments. Even a lot of pe fans of other teams jumped in the comment section and made their voices heard. And so it was, it was just a big smorgasbord of comments and I, I enjoyed every single one of them, even the ones that told me I was crazy. Enjoyed every single one of them. Looking forward to your comments on this video as well, make sure you leave that comment down in the comment section below. And also don't forget, tomorrow night, 8.30p, we'll be live to talk about all of this stuff. We'll talk about you know the draft, we'll talk about free agency, we'll talk about what all these moves mean. If anything else were to crop up, hell, we're getting news every single day coming out of Ashburn. Oh, and by the way, somebody had COVID. At least they waited until after the season, so they had to shut down the facility. Don't start that shit now. Anyway, I digress. Tomorrow night, 8.30p, live for Washington Football Report Live. I will see you guys then. Uh, don't forget, if you haven't already done so, make sure you hit that uh, like button uh, down below. Hit that subscribe button. More importantly than anything else, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already hit that. And also, make sure you turn on that notification bell so you don't miss a thing. Until the next time, I'm your man, Louis T., and this has been Washington Football Report. And oh, yeah, by the way, I am a Washington football fan, etched in burgundy and gold. My Washington spirit will never die. Washington spirit will never fold until we meet again. Hail to our beloved Washington football team. Now, with that said, I'm going to glide to the side and allow you to enjoy the rest of your evening. And we'll reconvene tomorrow for the Washington Football Report live. Until then, I'm your man, Louis T. See you next time. Louis T. Network.